Hi, hi, Crystal here. Welcome to another video with the Interactive Immersive HQ. In this video, I'm going to show you how we can use the latest body tracking chop from the 2023 build to make this interactive orb that follows your wrist, your hand. And we won't need to use a connect or any body tracking sensors. We can do this live with a webcam, although you will need an NVIDIA GPU to use this chop. So let's begin. Boys, let's start with a clean network. I will drop a video device in chop and select your camera of choice. I'm going to do my HD webcam. So now you can see me and I'm going to just leave this here for now. And I'm going to build this orb that I want. I'm going to have a spear top. Drop it here. And I am make this into a polygon. If you want, you can make this viewer active and plus W so you can see what's happening. So it was a mesh and I want it as a polygon. Great. And after this, I'm going to right click and pipe it to a geometry comp. Great. Have this geometry comp over here. I'm going to add a line material and add this material onto the geometry. Let's change some of the parameters on this line mat. So on the second tab in line and line near, I'm going to make this to white and also to have the line far color also white. It's kind of hard to find this line far because it is the same color of this parameter comp, which is uh, the parameter box, which isn't super helpful, but it's right here. If you click on it, you can also make it white. Great. So now we have the material and let's make a render. Uh, let's add a camera comp and a render top. We don't need a light since this is a line material that we can just see it since it's flat. In this geometry, I'm going to lower the scale for now and let's make it rotate. So in this rotate, this uh, um, RY, I'm gonna add apps time dot frame and I'm gonna copy this and also put it here. Great, so we have this orb right here and let's make this orb a little bit more interesting. I will add a blur. Blur, I will increase the blur a bit and I will add a feedback. I'm going to just use the one in the palette. The feedback over here and I'll lower the opacity to like 0.75. Maybe I'll increase it later and I'm going to comp this on top of here with a over. And then so if we see if this moves, oops, we have like a trail that follows, which we want. Great. We'll add a null after this. And I'll call this out. And this will be our last. operator that I'll make it viewer active. So now we have this, but notice my this is my left hand, this is my right hand, so I wanna flip it. So this might not be the case for your webcam, but for mine it is, so I'm gonna flip this. And right now, let's see, I'm gonna flip it. So this is my left hand, this is my right hand. Great. And right now this is 640 by 480 resolution. And I have my, this be 1280 by 720. I think this is too small. So I want to refit it to be 1280 by 720. 
you don't have this to be fit outside. Great. So we have this and this, and we want this to be over this, but I want it to displace over it. So let's add a displacement top. And this displacement top, I'm going to have the orb be on the bottom and the camera input on the top. And right now you're like, whoa, this is not how I want this to be. Uh, we need to lower this displace weight by, let's 0 0.01 to 0 0.01. Quite light. We can also actually make it maybe a little bit more. 0 0.02. 0 0.02. Great. And... I'm going to reorder this. So this is the last node so we can see what's happening here. So if I just go on the geometry and I see move the translate, you'll see how it takes the image, which is the camera input, and um and it displaces it so it has this like almost this invisible gooey look, which I quite like. But I don't know if you notice over here, you can see some of this edge from the displacement, displace top. So I'm going to just crop that out. Um, actually, I'm going to add a transform and just zoom us a little bit here. There you go. So now we don't see that anymore. Great. This is the foundation of everything. And now we will add the body tracking chop. So let's cut down a body tracking chop. Body track chop. And this is my video input. This is a flip. This is a fit. At the end, this is what I want it to be tracking. So you see that it has a error because it doesn't reference anything. So you need to reference a top. So I will just drag this over here. And keep note, a few times when I did the body tracking chop, touch sign crashed. So um, save your file and also play with that for some reason when I did this um, before, that whenever I did the video, the top down the chain, it was crashing, but doing the video device input, it was okay. Um, if it crashed, maybe just play with that. But you see this body tracking, it has all these different channels. And I'm going to turn off rotation and also don't need body. Um, bounding boxes. Great. And what I will be selecting, I'm going to get a select chop after this. What I want is to have my wrist because there isn't a hand, but a wrist is connected to a hand. So let's get a <laughs> wrist. So what I'm going to over here find my left wrist so body one left wrist u and body left wrist v these are the two parameters uh two channels i want i'm going to rename them to left wrist x space left wrist y so this the u is will be the x and the y the v will be the y Awesome, and I'm gonna add another select. And this one of the selects is going to just be the X, and the other one will just be the Y. So right now, this orb over here, we are gonna see what is the most left range and what is the most right range. And then I'm going to go in place where I would want to, to do the uh, do stand and see where is my hand the most left and most right and high and low based on this body tracking chop. 
and then we can use the math to change the range. Right now, this geometry, if I pull it all the way to the most left, it is negative 1.63. I'm going to drop down a comment to just put that uh, x range negative 1.65. If it's rounded, is it 6.5? Yeah. So if I have it positive, it should just naturally go to the most right. Cool. So the range will be negative 1.65 to 1.65. Awesome. And then let's uh, check the wiring. I'm going to zero this out to the middle. And let's pull this to the highest point. So it seems like it's 0 0.8 and negative 8. So negative 8 and 8. Great. And let's see what is the lowest and highest of the left wrist. If I go to where Paul would stand and see left yeah. be honest i couldn't see the numbers when i was standing back over there but <laughs> i did this project before so i would know the range is about the x was 0 to 1, but the y was 0 0.15 to 0 0.6. So with that, I'm going to move this little note over here. I will add a math chop. And this math chop, I will make it to be 0 to 1 to be negative 1.65 1.65 and this might change depending on the test afterwards and I would assume your range will be different from my range. So this one I will have the range to be 0 0.15 to 0 0.6 and to be negative 0.8 to I'll merge these two. And I'll add a null. And I'll call this sphere. Great, let's just. I'm gonna add a filter, but I'm gonna show you how it'll look without it, and then you'll understand why we'll add a filter. Um, so I'm gonna just drag this X to translate X and translate Y, and it's kind of being all bouncy right now because it, the body tracking does not see any hands, so it's like trying to estimate where it's gonna be. So, but if I go back here, I should. You see how it's like all buggy? So if we add a filter, a filter top, and I'll have this to be 0.25, it's what I had earlier. Like the lag where it feels smooth or oh, feels like it's floating a bit, but that is just depends on your own taste. And one last thing that I did was have it so uh, when the ball was higher, it was bigger, and when it was lower, it was smaller. And we could just use the same left wrist Y 
And I'm just going to rename this to be left wrist scale and add another math. I'm going to have this math to be the same range 0.15 to 0.6. And I want the scale to be the range of 0.15, which is this small, to 0.5, which is this big. Great. Wait, one five two point five, and pipe this to the merge, and we'll just put the scale over here. And let's see what we got. Well, thanks for joining in. This ball is on my head right now. I'm excited to see the fun projects you do with this. And please remember to tag the Interactive Mercer the HQ and also me on any social media that you want to share your work to. I'll leave my handle in the caption below and see you next time. Bye. Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you like our YouTube content, I highly recommend you check out the Interactive and Immersive HQ Pro. The HQ Pro is the only comprehensive educational resource and community for immersive design, touch designer, and creative tech pros. In the HQ Pro trainings, we cover almost any topic you can think of, and we go way more in depth than we do in our YouTube tutorials. We have a private group where Matthew Reagan, myself, and our other industry veteran and pioneer teachers answer your questions every single day. If that sounds cool, click the link in the description to learn more. And if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe for more free touch designer and immersive content.